right, another episode of the Cedric Maxwell Podcast. I am Josue Pavone. He is Cedric Maxwell. Happy holidays to everyone. I hope everyone's enjoying this time with their family. So we have to give you a brand new episode, right? You can gather around the kids. You know, we'll keep this up somewhat PG, I guess. I mean, it never <laughs> PG, right? it's Good never PG with, with you. So. Okay. Dude, we'll try. This is our best attempt, right? Yeah. <laughs> the Boston Celtics, uh, back to their winning ways. You know, they flip flop. They flip flop this season, right, Max? I mean, it's a it's a 500 team. Uh, oh, <laughs> at the end of the day, overall, we'll get into that. You know, the true identity of this team, and if they truly are a 500 team. But let's uh, let's keep things on the bright side. You know, coming off this win against the Cleveland Cavaliers, a top three team in the Eastern Conference, you know, Jalen Brown, another uh, terrific performance ever since he's come back into the fold. You know, he seems like he's found his groove here, Max. But yeah. but the, the news dropped that Joe Johnson before before tip off and uh, and Max and, and his true ways for the guy who got drafted 20 years before this performance, you know, back in the Boston Celtics uniform. I, I got to ask you, what, what did you say to him? Because I couldn't make out exactly what, you know, through the Zoom press conference, pregame press conference. I couldn't make out exactly what you were saying, but like, what, what did you say to him that had him cracking up so much before uh, before putting back on that, that that Celtics uniform and getting back out there? At the, well, at the I was just, I was laughing. He was actually in a, a closed news conference. It was himself and yeah, I was I was in that via Zoom. Reporters and they were all hanging out and they were asking a couple questions. So I was looking for him and um, found him in that room and I walked in and I said, "The real thirty one is up in here." <laughs> and I said that not 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 about me being the real 31, but I was more referring to the fact that Joe Johnson initially, uh, when he came to the Boston Celtics, that's the number that he wore. And so throughout the years, uh, when Joe was in, we traded Joe to Phoenix, then to Atlanta, uh, every place he's played, I'd always come up to him, he, and he'd always tell me about his teammates. He'd come in and tell his teammates, see, they already retired my jersey already here. That was the number I wore right there, 31. So we've always yeah. had a chuckle and a laugh about it. And uh, and I was just kind of just poking fun at him. I was just happy that he was back and, and more uh, surprised when you think about a guy his age at uh, 40 years old. I, I'm sure he never thought that he'd get a call from the Boston Celtics to come back and play in a real NBA game uh, along with several other people. It's an incredible story, Max. I mean, have you have you seen anything like it for a team that you know twenty years after they drafted you to come back and at forty years old go out there and and, and he, he stayed true to his name, right? He was a bucket. He, he got a bucket. I, yeah, I think unbelievable. The only time we've seen stuff like that has been when a guy comes back after he's been in the league so long and comes back to say, "Oh, this is it. I'm retiring. I'm retiring as right. a Celtic." But he's coming back to get a ten day contract. And you don't see that kind of stuff happen with players normally. Like, and when they come back, it's, it's they're done. Joe Johnson came back and scored a bucket, and it was, and and the fans absolutely went crazy. They uh, they acknowledged the kind of player he's been, and and him being with this franchise already. And the, and there was a certain point last night when the game was all but over. The fans are chanting, "We want Joe. We yeah, want man. Joe." And he said that meant a lot to him. Send him in, and and yeah. and he touched the basketball the first time. People were going crazy. Touched it the second time. Just did the right thing. But the third time he got it, Joe Johnson, true to himself, went out, got a pick and roll, and got a bucket with a fallaway jump shot. Well, what was your immediate reaction to the news? Because obviously, it says a lot about Joe Johnson and, and what he what he means to the to Ime Udoka and the Celtics. But what do you think a move like this means? You know, what does it say about Ime and, and his coaching staff and direction the Celtics are going in? It, it didn't say as much to me about the coaching staff. It just told me much more about the times we're in. Uh, when you look at the number of guys who are coming back in this league and are playing in the NBA now. It doesn't seem as much about the coaching staff, MA style. It says more about the times we're living in, that you have to go back and recycle uh, a player that you had 20 years ago. Uh, and if you haven't been out of the league that long, man, uh, you know, Brad Stevens asked me, he said, well, Max, you know, you, you still think you got it? I was like, hell to the no. I, I don't have anything, bro. I, I got nothing for you, Brad. I, I can't even. I can't even run down. I told you the story. I was in Los Angeles, basketball, and, and I couldn't even cross. I was trying to cross the street, 
and start running because I was in a the, the, the number it, it got down to zero and I'm like okay I sprint across here sprinting across turned to like okay walking fast with hand out telling cars to slow down yeah yo what did so, your knee uh, say now, what did your knee say about nothing. that what did your knees your knees said they were they weren't they weren't enjoying that right knees everything look the you know, the, Joe, the Joe Johnson story obviously is great you know I, you know the fact that it was 2000s night it had that like nostalgic feeling in the air they had the old school intros you know from that season. It was all fitting. And, of course, the Southern came out victorious. I mean, Jalen Brown's been on a streak here. I love the fact that these guys, you know, him and uh, uh, Jalen and, and Joe Johnson, they both worked out together over the summertime. You know, they both talked about that uh, after this, after that, that win from the Celtics. I mean, this is a great story for not only Joe Johnson, but now you have someone in the locker room with experience that can, that can share that knowledge and that wisdom with someone like Jalen Brown, who's really found his stride right now. I, I think, it all, you know, a lot of the positive things are coming out of this. Uh, when you can bring a veteran player back in that knows the play, knows the game, this guy was an eight-time All Star or something All Star. Right, uh, he did in Boston. Uh, right. You know, you send him away, he goes to Phoenix, he stays there, and then goes to end up going to uh, Atlanta. And uh, you know, he was he was up in your, you know, Paul Pierce. One of the the signature crossovers you've seen. Over the last couple of years, was the fact when Joe Johnson had a low dribble, Paul oh, Pierce went to make the steal, and Paul Pierce had, had Paul Pierce on his knees. Yo, man, we don't talk Joe about that. Johnson, no, but we don't talk about right. that. We don't talk about that. Man, no. Paul, Joe Johnson hits a fifteen foot jump shot, and the crowd. We were in Boston. Listen, the crowd yeah, no, I was there. I was there as a fan. Yeah, this is before my reporting days. I, was, I took that in as a fan, so I remember. I remember. All it was was, ooh. and it was just like. Paul, he broke Paul down so so bad that his teammates kind of went. Ooh. Yeah, it was. Cold. You know, you like to use that. You like to use that reference. Uh, what, what is it? The first time you know uh, Ali got hit, or the first time you see you know your, your guy, you start thinking maybe maybe he's aging a bit. That was that moment for me right there. Taking that in live, I was like, okay, Paul, 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 he's gonna he's aging now. You know, he's in a different. Yeah, yeah. You, you, your your heroes all of a sudden can't do what they did before. As right. you said, like Muhammad Ali knocking out everybody, or right. when you see guys starting to get older, they don't have the fastball. The first time you, Tyson you got see, hit, you know? yeah, you see yeah. all these things that happen. You're going, yeah, yeah. Father Time again has uh, has won that match, and you can see Paul Pierce on the other side of it. I saw Kevin Garnett on the other side of it when he went to Brooklyn. When he finally left here, uh, yeah. you know, here's a, a powerful player uh, that left here, and uh, he was. Uh, virtually a shell once he got to Brooklyn. Brooklyn to give the Celtics three first-round draft choices unconditionally for Paul Pierce and Kevin Garnett. That they were reading, they were reading their clippings. It, it wasn't about what they were doing at that time, but they were reading their clippings and right. thought that those two guys could kind of take them over the hump. And you know, history says that uh, Kevin Garnett essentially was done, and, and and Paul wasn't. Paul had a little bit more left in the tank. Uh, because he ended up going down to Washington and playing there. That was there. a good season for him. And, and uh, yeah. then once he got to the Clippers, I think you looked at Paul Pierce the same way you looked at Kevin. Like, you know, as they would say back in the day when you were around, last call for alcohol. <laughs> the last round. That's what that was. Yeah, for, for real. But it, it, crept, it happened quickly. You know, it crept up. You know, you know, Ray Jarrano going down didn't help things, of course, and into the new chapter of the, of the Celtics franchise. But – the way things are right now, Max, because think about it. This is always the time of the year where you start to sort of take inventory as to where this team stands, right? Christmas mm -hmm. break, you mm -hmm. know, it's not quite the halfway mark, but you sort of have an idea of uh, what the roster is about, what the identity is about. How do you feel about this team at this point, right? 500, you mm -hmm. know, smack middle 500, sort of out of the playoff picture, in the playoff bubble. But how are we feeling about this team right now? I mean, it's kind of an interesting spot because you got Jason Tatum coming off being player of the week. You got Jalen Brown turning into 30 plus point performances, but this team is still 500 and they still have a tough schedule ahead of them that starts on Christmas Day against the Milwaukee Bucks. Like, yeah, how do you feel I, I, about this yeah. roster right now? I think it's, I think it's um, about like those tests you used to take back in the day, or I took in the day when they give you a test paper, came back and was not an F, not an A, not a B, incomplete. incomplete. And, and, and that's what you look at this team and you're going yeah. pretty much incomplete. And I don't think you're going to know much as much about this team until 
all these circumstances. I don't think you're going to know about this this year until we actually read about it years from now. You think about it. With this team right now going through COVID and Al and, 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 and all the guys who had it, Jalen and Tatum and, and Brown, all, you, you look at all these guys who had COVID and gone through it. Um, this team, collectively, if you look at this team, not bad. I mean, I don't think this is a championship team, but a team that to me is going to be a solid playoff team. And if they can get through this rough patch of, of games that they have, Tatum has turned into Tatum again when you watch him. Brown has been really good. Uh, it's going to be those ancillary pieces. Uh, you know, what happens with Al Horf when he comes back? Uh, he has played really, you know, it, it, it's just all these things that you look at and say, okay, what can this team do? Uh, Richardson has been really good. You're starting to see uh, Pritchard uh, turn the corner. A little bit of knee Smith at time for time. So just a lot of different things kind of up and down. And, you know, Rob Williams is a, is a key to what they do, but can he stay healthy? And that's going to be a whole nother issue. Right. See, that's why it's so hard to tell where where this team should go in terms of personnel wise. Right. There's, I still think there's plenty of time here. Well, maybe not plenty of time because two weeks can go really fast in the NBA. But I think that's sort of where this team stands in, in the sense of where they need to go and what direction in terms of making a deal. Now, I still think a potential deal, which I thought it was fitting for to see Joe Johnson back. I, I use this in the, the, the Celtics post game or the uh, the guard report Celtics post game show, you know, after the game. I'm like, man. Look, look, let me take you back at the time about 20 years ago. I may be aging myself a bit, but Joe Johnson, at the, well, he was around for about six months. He was traded for a couple of pieces, right? Those pieces were Tony Doak and Ronnie Rogers. Now, these are two pieces that the Celtics wanted to have going into the playoffs, two pieces that they thought could push them over the edge and, and make them a, a final, mm -hmm. an NBA Finals appearance, right? So fast forward 20 years later, I mean, the Celtics, I think if they can try to sort of move one of these pieces, whether it's one of these younger guys and, and Neesmith or Romeo, you know, obviously it's hard to tell what their value is right now. But moving one of those pieces to consolidate that into bringing in someone that can actually, you know, be like a fifth or, or a sixth option, someone that can give you uh, something on both ends of the floor. Do you think that's a, a potential possibility? Do you think Brad Stevens is looking at something I mean, like that? I think Brad has to be looking at everything now. And Brad, to me, would know more about, you know, who he'd want to trade and who would be good for this team because he was a guy who's had this team, coached him for the last six, seven years. And so he knows more about the deficiencies and he knows more about the strengths of this team. So if, if anybody's going to make a move, I think Brad Stevens would be more informed than anybody else around. Even if, even if it's a general manager right now, uh, you know, Danny Ainge, as much as he, as he was around, Brad has more hands on with experience with the guys that he has now than anybody else. And then, then you look at it, you never can tell. Look, look what happened the other day when Kimba came back. Everybody said, Kimba's done. Kimba's done. Where's he, where's he drop? 30 up in the building or close to it. And, you know, they had yeah. him essentially on he the bench off. in New York. Now he's, now it seems like he's going to be getting more playing time because Derrick Rose is going to be sidelined for a bit, so he's going to have more of an opportunity there to show you know show what he's worth right now. But yeah, that's an interesting example. But Max, I mean, if you're in that, if you're in Brad Stevens' seat, what would you do? How do you feel about this roster right now? Um, here's the thing: if I'm Brad Stevens, I'm looking at this team and saying, okay, what can I do to put this team in the best position right now? to win a championship, to compete in that level. The thing you saw when you played against Philadelphia is you don't have a dominant big. And I mean a big who can score the back. Joel B tore the Celtics a new one in that game. And because of that, that's why to me, and you, you always laugh at me, but that's why I'm such a big Carl Anthony Towns guy. No, nah, here we go again. Well, I'm just here saying what he. It's not that I. I'm not. No, wait. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Don't don't change the narrative now. I don't. I don't laugh at you when you say this. I just don't. I think it's a little okay. I just want to. I want to see what there's these nothing, guys got. There's nothing. There's nothing premature about it. 
Because I, okay. I want to see what Jalen and Tatum have. Yeah. This, I, 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 this what do you what mean? I'll ask you. The way this team is right now, all pieces playing well together. Is this team a championship team? No. No. Okay. No. Well, if they're not a championship team, and if they're a team that is a play-in team, then that means you're in no man's land. You're not bad enough to get a really good player in the draft, and you're not good enough to advance in the playoffs. So you're 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 kind of in the middle, and nobody so you, wants, so you, so you nobody think that, wants you think, that position. So you think they'll stay here, though? That, like, I guess that's ultimately the question, you know, to, to answer, right? Or, or better yet, can this team actually make it to the to the NBA Finals at least? Do you think they're they're that good? Can they win an Eastern Conference championship? Mm. I think that was the, for me, and I said it early on, I think their best case scenario would be getting to the finals. And that means that they would have to beat beat a Brooklyn somehow. They'd have to beat Philly in the seven-game series. They would have to beat uh, Miami in the seven-game series. Uh, One of these teams, one of these really good teams is playing well. You have to beat them. And even look at Cleveland. Cleveland was the third play, the third best team in yeah. the Eastern Conference right now. You're looking good right the now. Seven game series. Do you, can you can you beat this team if everybody's healthy? And and and, and that's it. I I applaud the commissioner right now and what he did. He said, "Look, no, nah, we ain't stopping there for a week. We ain't stopping there for a month." He said because he said it best. He said, "COVID is going to be around. It's not going to leave." So we're going to have to adjust, all our players. Matter of fact, the game that they're having, and as a broadcaster, I have the Christmas Day game. And we're actually doing the game from the studio uh, here in Boston. Which I'm sure you're bummed, you're bummed about. I'm, 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 I can imagine you're bummed out about that, right? No, but, no, but what they're saying now is that the commissioner not going to Milwaukee. all teams that are playing on that day, be ready for an adjustment. So our game, instead of being a 2.30, we can play a 5 o'clock game. Or we can play a later game. It just depends on how the NBA feels about the teams who are out there and what's the best product. You think about it. The best product you have right now on Christmas Day is going to be Phoenix and Golden State. That's going to yeah, be the best game. Right. Because the two, the two best teams <clears throat> playing. After that, you think about, okay, the Lakers are playing, but there's no Anthony Davis, and how many will they lose by then? Uh, the Celtics are healthy. Uh, Milwaukee, do they have Giannis? Do they have uh, – No, yeah. Giannis looks like he's, not, he's probably not going to well, play. Well, if Giannis isn't going to play, is that is that one of the games that you – is that a marquee game you want to see at 2 o'clock? So I think anything can happen. That's what's so crazy about this league and, yeah. and the times we're living in. I just would like to see the Celtics just make, just add another piece that's about this year, right? Like, you know, everyone's wondering what's going to happen within the next three, four, or five weeks. You know, are they going to make a move? Is this Ross going to say the same? How do you do that without making a trade, Josue? But that's what I'm talking about, Max. That's what I'm about to get to. You know, if you, if you can package one of these younger guys, whether it's an Aaron Neesmith, and you can package it with a couple of first-round picks and bring a piece in here that can make an immediate effect. Look, I'm not talking about someone that's going to be – you know, to complete a big three, a new big three. No, I think I think aiming that high would, would, would mean training someone like Smart, training someone like Brown, or someone, you know, someone else like that. I'm talking about bringing in a guy that can give you scoring and a little bit on the defensive end. I mean, look, there's a couple of options out there. Whether we're talking about, look, I, I, I like Buddy Heald, okay? A. Sherrod Blakely doesn't like my ideas, and he's not a huge fan of the, of the Buddy Heald one. But I like someone like Buddy. I guarantee the I guarantee the Lakers are the Lakers are fond of that idea. They would love they they wish they had made that trade. But I mean, yeah, I'm sure they I'm sure they're looking back on it. Who Buddy Buddy Hill for who? Who who you who you gonna send out there that that Golden that that Sacramento is gonna say, hey, yeah, we're fighting on that. This would be this would be this would be pick base, right? You got I, w- I would send I would send this is me right yeah I would send a, a couple of future firsts uh Herding uh, Gomez this is the match contracts right uh, you got Richardson Josh Richardson in the deal and Aaron Neesmith now with Aaron Neesmith 
you know, that could be a piece for the future. You, you'll you find out, you'll find out whether that's true or not within the sure. next year or so. Now, the best part of this deal, Max, is all three of those guys, their contracts expire in a couple of seasons. So you're going to have a chunk of change to spend in the free agency market come 2023. Not next summer, but come 2023. So you'd have to wait a bit. But if the Sacramento Kings are selling out parts the way some people are you know, speculating, then I think this sort of falls in their plan, right? You grab a couple of future first-round picks. Yeah. You grab someone like Aaron Neesmith. And, and you have a couple – you know, you have some dollars to spend in, 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 the, in the next couple of summers. All right. Well, so buddy, healed, buddy healed, I would I would think that you would that if I'm, if I'm Sacramento, I'd want more because there are a lot of teams out right now who are going to be buyers. There are teams right now who who have to be buyers. I mean, if you are, would you? How about this? Would you would you send Buddy Hill to the Lakers for Westbrook? Would you do that if you're Sacramento? Gone, you going? Nah, uh-uh, I wouldn't do. That. I wouldn't do that at all. Now give me Aaron Neesmith. I like I like that Neesmith kid from Boston. Neesmith for Buddy Hill. You really think that they're gonna bite on that one? Listen, listen. The the way this works for the Celtics is if they strike out with other teams. You know, like because think about it. At the end of the day, Lakers are gonna make that deal. But what other teams can can trump that type of offer, or at least? You know, maybe it's somewhere around the same vicinity of what the Celtics are offering. We'll see. I'm telling you. I... It's just one example, Max. That, that's my guy. But there's other guys out there. People are talking about Karis LeVert. People are talking about, uh, uh, what's it, Cam Reddish? Cam Reddish in, in Atlanta, you know? So there's other, there's other you know, I, Again, I think that these are ancillary pieces. And if you're going to do something, you got to do something in a major way. But will that push them over the and edge? I know, I know you, I know you, you have... You think a piece does that right now? You have two untouchables. You have Brown and Tatum. You said nope. We know that Tatum's not going any place. Are you willing to use Brown as trade bait? Not yet. Not well, yet. Yeah, now let me say this, my friend. You ain't getting too much out, out of that deal. From oh, nobody else. Come on. You you, you got to give up one of your assets. I mean, you think about it. When the Lakers went out, it was a bad trade, but when the Lakers went out and got Westbrook, what did they give up? Oh, a, a lot. Hell of a lot. They, a stack. Get, a stack. Kuzma, Westbrook. picks, all that good stuff. Yeah. They, they got picks. They got money. I mean, right, yeah, the, I mean, the, the Wizards got themselves. The, the, the Wizards traded for a whole supporting cast. That's what they yeah, did. Yeah, Washington got two really good players. Yeah. Kyle Kuzma has played well down there. You think about, and, you know, that that is one of those things you look at and going, okay. But but if you're the Celtics right now, you don't have, you don't have a major piece that you're giving up that other teams are going to look at unless it's the potential of Rob Williams and you're going to have your Marcus Smart or Brown. You got three guys that could possibly get you something in that neighborhood, but you're going to have to give, you're going to have to give up one of those three guys and the guy who would be pushing more power than anybody would be Brown. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. No, no question. No question, Max. All right, man, you brought up the Lakers. So before we wrap things up, man, let's talk a little bit about Isaiah Thomas. You know, he saw, speaking of people getting a 10 day, 10 day contract, Isaiah Thomas got himself a 10 day with the Los Angeles Lakers going out there. Man, was he dropping, dropping damn near 20, 19 points in his, in his Lakers. Uh, I was going to say debut, but in his Lakers return rather. Well, how do you, how do you feel about this, man? How, what was your reaction? Are you surprised by and, this? And, no. And he they showed lost, out the G and, League, the, the G Lakers League showcase. Lost by how many? What's up? And the Lakers lost by how many? They lost by the, it was in double digits. I don't know exactly, but it was double digits. They got I, I mean, I don't. I just think all of that's a band aid, uh, you know. And it is this era. It's the Joe Johnson era. Is it is the Isaiah era because of COVID has allowed the door to be open for guys who essentially were out of this league and weren't going anyplace. I can't believe right now, as, as, and as much as I've always talked about him, I like him, that uh, Sullinger, I remember, I think he, he was the guy who would wanted desperately to be on the team. And I'd love to have him for the Celtics. But 
here he went back to China. And I'm sure he has a contract that he can't leave you for. You have to pay a hell of a lot of money. But guys like that, they could help your help your position, you help your team. You know what? You bring up. I'm I'm glad you just brought up Salinger because you know it, it's it's an interesting conversation when you think about it that the uh, the way things have changed, right? You know, 10, 15 years ago, maybe the money that's offered in China, or definitely the money that's offered in China, is not the same, right? Right. You know, you fast forward now, so now players sort of have to choose. You know, you can make more money in China, or you can try to you know you know grind it out and try to make an NBA team. And some other players like Jared Salinger, they they chose China. Yeah, I think that Salinger. Wait it, and then it depends on who you are. If you got a family, you got the family support. Soldier, I think, just had a baby and he has a family, and so you, you, your path is different if you're a single man and you're by yourself instead of a, a married man trying yeah. to get back in this league. And I applaud Isaiah. It's a good point uh, for continue along with his dream. Um, and the, and COVID has helped along with the process. I mean, he played well in the world games and did well. But at the end of the day, Isaiah wants to be in the NBA where he can compete. Yeah, definitely. I mean, if, you say, if you're saying it like this, why don't you, uh, Joseph, why don't you bring back Ricky Davis? Hey, man, he's in the big three. Listen, if you're playing in the big three right now, you got to be, you, you had to be watching Joe Johnson thinking, look, that could be, that could be me, you know. Well, maybe, asked, maybe that's I next asked, for me. I asked Scal about it. Scal was in the big three for a while. I asked him, "Do you have anything?" Scal, now you start laughing. No, listen, listen. No, 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 no. The only reason I'm laughing, Max. Hear me out. Hear me out. I was running late to the game, and I'm listening to you. And you, you, you brought it up. You brought it up before the first quarter or during the first quarter, and you were like, "So I talked to Scal about it." And Scal, you said it perfectly. Scal goes, "Nah, man, can't do it. No legs." And your perfect response goes, oh, "Okay." Okay. It's like you just left it at that. <laughs> I got you. Got you. It's like, that was it. Like, that's all. Enough said. Like, he can't do full court no more, you know? So, he, he's, he's strictly big three. <laughs> and then you and, you and Grandy, I, I swear, man, you guys have the, the, the chemistry down. That perfect pause for emphasis, and then Grandy goes right into the game. Oh, man, I was cracking up, man. So, yeah, I'm glad I got to listen to that on the way in. And, and yeah, that was that was perfect. You paint the picture perfectly. You know, he's just he's, he's not in it for the for the full court, the full court run. I, I can understand what he's saying, um, but I don't think that we would have ever thought that Joe Johnson we'd see him in the Celtic uniform again. Right. I don't think anybody, yeah. you know, even your wildest imagination, what's right. going on with COVID. It's taking so many guys out. And Max, and Boston, your eyebrows definitely went up when you heard that news. Yeah, I well, you. Boston now has. There's something that Boston has about players who are playing here or not playing here about being vaccinated. We'll see what happens. I mean, everything right now is so fluid that I don't know, you know, what could possibly happen. Well, how do you feel about that? Like he may making making that decision because I thought it was interesting. One of the first questions that was that was fired at him was, "Why not a younger guy? Why not someone from the G League? You know, but why, why did you go in this direction?" And another question was, "Did you have a workout with him?" And he may said, "Nope." No workout. We just brought him in. Well, I think that Ime was satisfied that he could still play in some capacity because he saw him in the three-on-three, the mm -hmm. big three. The big and three, And yeah. because of that, the game, the skill set. Now, if you can run up and down the floor, if you know how to handle a pick and a roll, if you are athletic enough to guard a wing guy, Joe, Joe Johnson wasn't a bad defender. He no, was he running. wasn't. He yeah. wasn't a bad defender. Because um, his lateral movement, he was yeah, key. His lateral did, movement was always key, yeah. He still can score the basketball. There's right. a place in the NBA for that now. It's incredible. I love it. I love the story. All right, Max, what's the plan this weekend? What's going on? It's Christmas weekend. Saturday, Christmas Day. Perfect. <laughs> don't get no better than that, right? Look, I don't think it gets any better than that. I think that I'm waiting right now. And if you guys haven't hit that like button or subscribe to what we're at, you're, you're kind of crazy. But I think some of the things that are coming up with us is like you and I are talking about a, a reveal. And we see all these song reveals. This is going to be the 80s versus the 2000s. Let's some go. Of the reveals that. Joe Sway has, and then I. Oh, I didn't even tease it. I love you teasing this right now. This is great. Yeah, there. I mean, they're going to be absolutely <laughs> like I'm old school classic. Joe Sway is um, 
alien ant farm with Billy. No, Jesus. he's not. So Get like, out of here. <laughs> no, whoa, not nineties, nineties alternative. You know, a little mix of that. You know, all right. Put it, put it this way, Max. We're gonna be. We're gonna be playing some of our guilty pleasures, if you will. You know what I mean. Everyone's got that genre or those or those artists that you only play when you're by yourself. You know, you don't play in front of your boys all the time and whatnot. And and you know, but Max, you don't have any of those though. You don't have it. You know, you, you stick to your you stick to who you you know your, your roots and you. you no, listen to I, what you listen I'm to. rooted in it. I mean, I am uh, about as old school as I get. I go with with uh, uh, Charlie Wilson from the Gap Band. I you know. Yeah, but you're not hiding Charlie from your boys, right? right. Like, who do you? Yeah. No, um, who would I hide from my boys? That's you bumping like Celine Dion and Low? You bumping uh, like you know, like you listen to like probably, probably Darius Rucker from Hootie and the Blowfish. The, when, the, when he went country, the yeah, country yeah, I'm, I'm with. Him. And it's so funny. I saw him in wow. Charlotte. I saw him in Charlotte and walking through the airport. I don't think that many people recognize him, man. And I don't know why I had him on my playlist. And you recognize I said, him? I said, Darius. And he turned around and looked to see was calling him. I didn't even say anything. And he just kept, and then he couldn't figure it out. And then he kept walking. But I thought that was funny. So Because he was a, like, I know, you know why, though? He was, I know it wasn't that black dude. I know yeah, was, yeah, but I mean, yeah, yeah, that probably is true. But it's just like, I don't, I, those would be the ones I think that, that you know, for me, that might be a little different when it came to selections of my music, which are okay, not from my particular era. Not a Luther Vandross, not a right. you know, Frankie Beverly and Mays, and the, and you know, not a Kim, people like that. But but out of my my era would have been something like that, like Hootie and the Blowfish, and not even Hootie and the Blowfish. Be more like Darius Rucker when you went country. Yeah, when you went country, that's a whole different vibe. You you got to pull up with those then. You got to pull up with that record too. <laughs> we, we're gonna do yeah, all. Yeah, that. yeah. I mean, the biggest one that has been revealed over and over again, and I hope you've heard it. Uh, we're gonna do uh, Chris Stapleton. Okay, that's right. It's yeah, we talked about that. Tennessee whiskey. <laughs> that's right. You sent that one. And in. the live version of that, if Josue, if you haven't heard that, you're gonna be on it. You're gonna go. Oh, we're gonna find out. That bro, that white man got some soul. <laughs> all right, all right. I'm he gonna get you be, some gems he too. Might be, he might be Larry Bird of country music when you think about having wow. some soul in this game. Okay, I want to hear it. You know what? I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna you know put together some gems for you. You know, some stuff that's right up your alley that you don't know about. You'll be surprised, Max. I'm all I'm all that. You know, I'm, I, you, I got you all went kinds with of some of the names you told me before. That was enough for me. When you you went with uh, red hot chili peppers, I'm like, yeah, Whoa. that's a vibe. I don't, know, I don't know a brother around here, other than <laughs> you and your brother, that might be listening to damn red yeah, hot. Yeah, Joel, Joel knows. Joel's hip. Colin we Crow. There might be the only. There might be the only two black dudes or uh, men of color that I know that you know you could go. Ooh, let's on your playlist. Red Hot Chili Peppers, what? What? Really? Yeah, I guarantee you, you rock to some song, but you don't even know that that's the Chili Peppers. See, that's the thing with you, Max. I guarantee you there's some song that you you just don't know that the, you don't know that. The I love Josue. The only way I've listened to some of the songs you're talking about right now is because they play them in the arena. Yeah, Boston. At you're in Boston. That's why. Or during the game. That's the only. The only way I know the dance team will come out and dance to something. I'm like, whoa, who, who was that? And they go, oh, that was, and you said something the other way, get it away. What is that song? Get oh, give, away, it away, give, away, give it away, give it away, give it away. Yeah. Said, they play that. I heard the, I heard the dance team do it, but that's about yeah. it. But I would go, you know what? I might even say I'd rock a little bit of uh, Kanye West. I okay. could go with some of the stuff that Kanye West is doing. He's one of my favorite. As crazy all time. as he is, and and as out there as he is, there's things that I really like about Kanye West. But but it's more about Kanye West sampling music, which came yeah. out of the '80s. Yeah, that is. I think I'm, I think that's why you know because his sampling yeah. of Ray Charles to me, yeah, you know yeah. that to me was just brilliant, and, and mm. I loved it. I'm gonna give you some gems too. He he sampled. He did a great, a couple great samples of Otis Redding. 
I'm gonna put you on, man. It's good mm-hmm. stuff. Him and Jay Z. But yeah, man, we're gonna have a blast with that. That's funny you mentioned that, that those yeah. artists, but yeah, I went to school in the burbs, all right? I went to school in the suburbs. So you gotta, you know, <laughs> you listen to some shit you wouldn't normally hear in the hood. You know, that's what it was. That's what that is. There is no question about your musical variety, which <laughs> really changed going to a uh, going out in the burbs to a, out in the burb. a white school. <laughs> the music that you were introduced to, like, and because it's like, would you for instance, say you were in a group of brothers down in the, and you lived over in Dorchester, Matter of Hand, and y'all, you were playing records on a, um, I'll say it, records on a jukebox. Would you play Red Hot Chili Peppers? <laughs> nah, I ain't dropping that. And you think everybody, would, if Red Hot Chili Peppers came on, you think everybody would go, ah. <laughs> what? <laughs> Who played that? And you better say it was me. Within two seconds, you turn that shit off right now. <laughs> I know that was Joe Sway. <laughs> Take that shit back to New York, motherfucker. I get clown. I get clown. <laughs> oh, that would be that would be so funny. So yeah, I I do understand. Um, you know what we used to do? Max, what we used to do back in the day when you really wanted to know somebody, go like, yo. If you if you really comfortable enough, switch iPods with that dude, right? Back in the day, right before wow. iPhones. You find out every type of genre this dude is into, you know, or, or girl, wow. whatever. You, swear. you really want to get to know somebody, you swap iPods with them and you find out everything they listen to. Yeah, that you know, that is true. One time I remember well when you said that. Didn't change iPods, but I was actually playing some music on a, that time, a, a disc player. And Marcus Johnson, who was my teammate with the Clippers, put his put his headphones in in his jack into my oh, okay. my, you my system and was listening. You and I'm just trying to gauge and he heard once some song that was out there and he went, like, oh, wow, who is that? Man, that was nice. It was some white guy that was out there that I had just heard of that yeah, I just had see? on my, you know, C D See you Max, they make they that? make great music too, Max. This is good. Well, you know, you say that and I remember <laughs> going back to UNC Charlotte. <laughs> In the early, in the late seventies, and my boys got in the car with me. Half of them were black, half of them were white. It's about about three or four guys. I had this big Lincoln Continental, and all of a sudden, Billy Joel came on. You know, I had a had a cassette in. Billy Joel came on, and I'm trying to switch it to go to the next song. And they were like, "Oh no, no, man, let me." Let me <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> yeah, who, who who knew? Who knew? <laughs> That's funny because you know sometimes it might be like one or two dudes and they're afraid to say something they're like but in their head they're like damn go back to that yeah, go back to yeah that, that was, <laughs> damn man that was nice or right, right. they look at you and going you got that in your repertoire yeah right you know about this so that, about that's going to be interesting when we come out and do that I think the next thing we're doing I want you guys to stay tuned and if you Absolutely. have any suggestions yeah hit us up of music yeah. that you would like us to go out and and you know, do a um, what is what did what did they call that? Or, or it's not a reveal. What did, what is it called? A, a listen or uh, a reaction? A reaction video yeah. to a reaction if you video. Want us to go out and hear. Please contact us. We like to go through it. We want to get. We're going to have about ten or twelve songs that we're going to do that are <laughs> just going to be you know. Kind of in the middle. Some of them are, are old classics, and, but then some of them are, are a little bit new. And I'm gonna try to introduce Joe Sway to a little bit of country western, and Joe oh, Sway man. might be trying to introduce me to a little bit of, uh, you know, rock and roll and a alternative, whatever. 90s alternative, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Some good, some as some long good rap. As you don't come out and and do that group called uh, Ramstein. Which one was that? German. It was, <laughs> I used to see it. They would put it on there. They were showing them coming to Atlanta. And uh, just on the video screen, like, you know, a preview of what was coming to the arena. And it was a group directly from Germany. It was one of those past heavy metal. I don't even know what they were doing. Oh, Blowing man. fire and all kind of stuff. But That's that was insane. one of the things I remember. Sounds like, awful. And that is something I would not listen to. <laughs> and anything, and, and just wait, how about this? Anything that you have, uh, you can do a mosh pit too. 
Yeah. I ain't trying yeah. to hear that. Yeah, I used to ask people who were into that, I'd be like, yo, how do you know when the song switches up? Like, it's just noise. Like, every song is just, it's just, there's no chorus. There's no, you know, <laughs> there's no hook. <laughs> it's just noise. And this dude's screaming the whole time. Like, yeah, I'm with you on that. You won't be listening to any of that, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I'm looking forward to everyone joining us. Probably post-Christmas, you know, I'm sure everybody's still be on break from work and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll jam out we'll, you know caught you know it's cedric maxwell podcast style clns media style it'll be fun man. i can't wait but max merry christmas man uh to to everyone happy holidays to you and yours man i hope everyone has a great time great safe holiday uh spending time with your friends and family man that's what it's all about this time of year yep absolutely we want all you guys to stay stay safe stay Definitely. tuned uh join us on our podcast adventure uh, we hear from you guys, and it only makes us stronger. So hit that subscribe button. And Absolutely. Hit that like button, and, uh, you know, we're only going to get stronger. I mean, I, I, I've i laughed, at, you know, with so much of this uh, uh, podcast stuff and the James Worthy, uh, you know, coming oh, at me and, 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 and on on podcasts, that to me, all that stuff is funny. But I always tell people you got to be relevant to for somebody to use your name and not have a reference. That's right. That's right. That's right. We're still out here. Everyone, subscribe, rate, review, obviously, on iTunes, uh, Stitcher, wherever you listen to us, man. We will appreciate it for sure. And we'll check you guys out next episode. Happy holidays, everyone. Peace.